Hi everyone, it's Ashley Riddell here with another tutorial bucket tutorial. What we're going to do today is take an image and we're going to produce an old style faded photograph with faded backgrounds and halftone effects. The original image is a nice clean digital image and we're going to mix it with a texture of a paper which I've taken from a Creative Commons licensed version of a paper scan from Flickr and we'll then produce our final composite image with all the effects combined. Okay, so we will start with the paper as our base for building all of this. I first need to bring over my portrait image which we're going to use for this, so I'll just do this the easy way. Just click on the portrait, take the move tool, just click and drag up to the paper tab, bring it down and drop it into place. I will get a message here because I've got a mismatch of uh, workspaces. I'll just say OK, that's no big deal and it drops it into place. Now it's obviously very very big so I will need to transform so I'll just zoom out and for those of you who aren't up on this transforming business there's a thing called free transform which on a PC control T will generate it on a Mac it's command T but it brings up these anchor points in a box so I'll just shrink this to size just dragging on the edge and if you want to keep it in proportion if you've forgotten all of this hold down shift must hold down shift, keeps it all in proportion. Just place that where we want it, bring it down to a size that's suitable for the final image that we're shooting for here. And I think I'll say that's that's near enough. There's a few edges that we can crop off at the end of it. And I'll say OK. All right, zoom back in and we're ready to go. Now the process for doing this is not terribly difficult, but it is very particular in the order that you need to do it. The blending mode is the key to get this to give you the base effect. So normal blending mode is set for the actual portrait, but we change this from normal to the multiply blending mode. Now that's just flown off the screen there, so I'll have to drag my camera up so you can see this. I'll try that again, find multiply. There is the multiply blending mode, drop that in and we get the change. Just drag my camera back. Okay, now that looks quite good on its own, but it's not what we're going for. We're going for the full effect here and it needs to be integrated into the background a little better. So there are a couple of things we first of all need to do. One is we need to desaturate this. We've got to get rid of all the colour because it's going to be an integrated monotone image. So easy way to do this is just to fiddle with the hue and saturation. Now, I'm not using an adjustment layer for this. You need to do this on the image itself to get this to work. If you really want to fiddle with an adjustment layer, knock yourself out, but I find this to be the easiest way. Shortcut, if you're using a PC, is Control u If you're using a Mac, you'll find that the shortcut for that is Command-U. This will bring you up a dialog box for hue and saturation. Just drag it over here. And all we do is take the saturation slider, drag it down to minus 100, and that will desaturate the image. Say OK. All right. Still not as integrated as it should be. But after we've desaturated, now we're going to play around with the luminosity of this thing by using levels. Again, we're going to work directly on the image. The shortcut for this, again, is Control L for the PC. For the Mac, you'll find that is Command L. This brings up the levels functions and I need to now increase the brightness by dragging the white point slider over to the left and that'll start to get rid of a lot of the shadow detail. You can fiddle with the gamma point slider if you want to fine tune the midtones and use the black point slider if you need to harden up the blacks in the image but usually you don't need to do that too much. We're trying to get this to fit in with the image, so I'll just say a little bit more down. Yep, I can live with that. That's enough. And we'll say OK. OK, so now that's looking quite integrated into the image. We can see the background texture, and for many jobs you'll find that this sort of effect is enough. You can walk away from it for a lot of jobs. But we're going the extra mile here. We're trying to make this look like an old newspaper photograph, so we need to get those dot effects called a half tone pattern and the way we can do this the easiest way to do this in my opinion is we're now going to create a stamp 
of the entire image. So there are a few ways of going about this, but I'm just going to use the stamp method. So we'll use a Control Shift Alt E, that's on the PC, and for the Mac that's Command Option Shift E, and that stamps up a complete copy of the entire image. Now this image is going to have a filter applied to it, so I need to go to my filter menu, and it's from the filter gallery. If you want to use the filter gallery, again, knock yourself out, but you can go directly into the sketch selection for the menu and choose halftone pattern, but half -tone pattern, but you can use the filter gallery as well. It's the same thing. All right, now we've got this gigantic screen, which I'll just try and shrink down as much as I possibly can so you can see what this looks like. It is truly stupendously large, which is a bit irritating, but that's the way it is with the Photoshop filters. And I'll just drag over so you can see the effect that you get on the image. This might knock down the size so you can get a better perspective of how it looks. Now there aren't too many options for a half tone pattern. You can control the size so you can make them bigger, but for this image it's probably a bit too much. So you just eyeball this, figure out what sort of size looks suitable for the image. So I'll be happy with that. The contrast will indicate how much of a newspaper style effect you want to get, and that's pretty good. So just again, figure out how much of the effect you want to apply. I'll settle for 19 for this image. Say OK. All right, now we've got the newspaper effect. We've got a bit of the background, but we now need to really just bring it all together. The new layer that we've worked on for our halftone pattern, I'm going to change its blending mode from normal to luminosity. What happens when we change to luminosity? We get the color back from the underlying layers. Now, because we've got this back, you can now do another little fiddle around, this time with the opacity. And you can just dial in as much of the halftone pattern layer as you need to get this to fit together with the existing layers and textures. So in this way you can really fine-tune this down to something that looks really nice. So we come to the finishing touch for this. It integrates very nicely into the background and halftones that we've played in, but now we're going to give it a little bit more roughness in the texture by creating some scratches and dust all over it. Now, this is pretty easy to do because we've already got the tools to do it. All you need to do is to turn off your image layers and just leave the paper background available. Go to Channels, and just go through each of the channels and find one that's got pretty good contrast. And I'll I think I'll settle on the green channel here, and I'll just copy it, and then I will control click, I'm using a PC, control click for the Mac, that's command click, to make a selection from it. Turn back on the layers, come back to your layers palette, turn back on both of the existing images, and go to the layer with the original image, not the halftone image, the one in between, and add in a layer mask. By clicking on the layer mask, that will then throw in this texture as a masking element. Now, does it make a difference to the image? I'll just turn this off for a second so you can see. See how it nicely lightens up the shadows of the image and gives it a bit more texture. If you want to be a bit more extreme about this, again, try your Levels tool. Control L for the PC, Command L for the Mac, and have a look at what happens when you exaggerate the gammas and the blacks by dragging them in, dragging the whites as well. You start to introduce a little bit more of a grain or tone effect into the image, which can really make it look very, very grainy. Let's say that much will do. And when you get that really, really grainy effect, you might need to soften it a little bit with just a little bit of blur. So I'll just go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, Eyeball this, you want to soften this up, this grain up a little bit so it's not too hard, but also reasonably sharp. So eyeball it, something like this will be good. And so you can see the difference, that's with, and that is without. And that integrates into the background much more nicely, I think. Hope you enjoyed that one.